April 22, 1914. It was the biggest thing he'd ever seen. Holding his father's hand, little Alex Sharp walked up to the Baker Bowl. There were vendors hawking their wares, catcalling to anyone who'd listen, buskers filling the street with music, and the rustling of thousands of feet shuffling their way through the gates. The Philadelphia Phillies were playing the Boston Braves that day. As Alex and his father made their way through the concourse, wafts of roasted peanuts and other sweet confections drifted by. At first, it was just a flash of green. But with a few more advancing steps, the field appeared like a sea of emeralds shimmering in the light. The players were milling about, some throwing a ball in preparation, others carefully wrapping their tobacco into just the right shape before engulfing the speckled brown mass into the sides of their cheek. The closer they got to the field, the more chaotic the scene felt, and the tighter Alex gripped his father's hand, not wanting to be lost in the melee. Before arriving at their seats, they paused just long enough to buy a box of Cracker Jack. Ten cents. The dime came out of his father's pocket with a freedom Alex had rarely seen, flipped to the vendor with a casualness indicative of wealth they did not possess. Snack in hand, they arrived at their seats some few rows back of the dugout. He knew the names of the players from the papers, but had never seen their faces, apart from the little tobacco cards he'd collect here and there. His father pointed to each. There's the manager, Chaz Dewan, and the guy with the big nose? That's Sherry McGee. Alex took a mental note of each. His father helped him open the box of Cracker Jack. He had never had popcorn before, let alone Cracker Jack. He reached in his small hand, grasping a few morsels, and lifted them to his mouth. Arising out of the box along with the sweet confection was a small card stuck to a peanut. He broke off the candied legume, popping the burnt sweetness into his mouth. As the caramelized sugar shattered into bits of deliciousness, he flipped over the card. And there, amongst a red background, was the photo of a baseball player in mid-throw, a familiar P on his uniform, Grover Cleveland Alexander. His father caught a glimpse. That's Pete Alexander, a great hurler, right so? With the eyes of an eagle in flight, his father scanned the field, stopping his gaze on the right side. With a gentle point, right there he is. Moments later, Pete Alexander was walking to the mound with the catcher, He's pitching today. He held the card out and kept it in his hand as the game got underway. The game flew by in a series of quick successions of light and sight and sound. The crowd was loud, but not as loud as the sound of the ball snapping into the catcher's mitt. Not as loud as the crack of the bat when Gavi Kravath hit a home run in the fifth inning. And not as loud as the umpire's thunderous call of strike three to finish the game. Just as quickly as it began, the game was over. The Phillies had beat the Braves three to one. The crowd hurried towards the exits. Alex paused, courage swelling in his chest. With his father's hand pulling him up the steps, Alex broke free and sprinted down towards the field. Mr. Alexander! Mr. Alexander! He cried out as he waved the baseball card that had yet to leave his hand. Pete, sweaty and dirty from the complete game win, rose his gaze to meet the boy. Out of the dugout came a flash of black, a pen ably caught by the ace pitcher. In what seemed like a single motion, Pete snagged the card out of Alex's hand, gracefully signed his name across the middle, and tossed the pen back into the dugout, and flicked the card back to Alex like a cardboard frisbee fastball. Good luck, kid, as he turned and disappeared into the clubhouse. His father called out with an insistent tone Alex knew not to ignore, and he scampered up the steps. He tucked the card into his pocket next to the ticket stub. When he got home, he tucked the fresh mint card and the ticket stub into his favorite book, a collection of Sherlock Holmes mysteries, and put it in the page of his favorite caper, The Adventure of the Cardboard Box. There it would stay for years, through homes lost and gained, through hell and back in World War II, through the death of his father and eventually his mother also, through the birth of his three children, 
The book was on his shelf in his first office when he was finally promoted to manager after 20 years as a lineman at the telephone company. When he retired, the book came home to his study where he would read the paper in the mornings, listen to the ball games on the single speaker radio in the afternoon, and read novels in the evening. It passed down from generation to generation, held privately, intimately treasured, waiting to be rediscovered. The only known copy of a Pete Alexander signed Cracker Jack card, and the earliest known Alexander autograph of any kind. A priceless artifact of baseball history. Waiting. Thanks for watching. And thank you to the first 1,000 subscribers. Here's to many more on Baseball Card Stories, Legends, and Lore.